Give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Deep in the heart of Africa, near the equator, where lions, elephants, and other wildlife roam the Nile Basin, a new economy is emerging in the developing nation of Uganda. Drawing from proven techniques developed at Auburn University, Ugandan fish farmers are building a sustainable aquaculture industry from the ground up. When we came here, we asked ourselves, now, let's say someone wants to start a commercial fish farm. What are they going to need? They're going to need um, good advice on their construction, design. They're going to need a source of seed, or fingerlings we call it. They're going to need feed. They're going to need trained workers for their farm. And they're going to need markets. And none of these were really well developed here at all. So we're working on several fronts all at once. Since the program's inception in 2005, Faculty and support personnel from the AU International Center of Aquaculture and Aquatic Environments have made numerous site visits to the farms in Uganda, demonstrating AU developed best practices. Karen Veverica and her team leading the fish project on the ground in Uganda have placed this know-how in the hands of the Ugandan farmers, creating jobs and generating much needed income. Veverica draws from more than 28 years of experience in aquaculture, including 15 years in Africa. We found that these Lake Victoria Nile tilapia are just beautiful. Sponsored by the U.S. Agency for International Development, the FISH project gives AU faculty and students the opportunity to apply Auburn know-how in developing and technologically challenged areas. As the fish farming industry has grown, support industries have emerged. Net makers, fish hatcheries, feed suppliers, and others providing even more Ugandans a way to earn a living. In the morning, they don't eat that much, but in the afternoon, they eat double that because it's gotten warmer. Although fish farming is nothing new to the Ugandans, it dates back to the 1950s, the most successful farmers are those employing the methods and techniques developed at Auburn. Before, we were just doing fish farming, but without right uh, equipment, without without uh, right, uh, no technical, proper technical know-how. But with the coming of uh, urban people in Uganda, um, fishing industry in Uganda has improved a lot. Because to me, I didn't have all that you see here before, but with the help of the urban, university, urban, uh, urban people, or the presence of the urban people here, has made my farm to grow more from what it was before. For decades, Ugandans have farmed fish to help feed their families, but rarely as something they could sell and generate a profit. That practice is changing, however, as farmers' confidence in the fish project grows. But as years went by with you know, development, changing times, the pressure to earn money out of whatever investment you have has increased. So every farmer, whether they are small farmers, peasant farmers, their ultimate goal is to earn money out of whatever they do. Initial skepticism by some farmers three years ago has given way to confidence in Auburn's project. The results produced have impressed local farmers enough to invest in AU's ideas. Beverica has seen the shift firsthand over the past three years and has been the driving force helping Ugandan fish farms become profitable. Siobhan Leonard is an Auburn graduate and general manager of Source of the Nile Fish Farm on Lake Victoria in Jinja. Leonard has worked closely with Veverica to interface with the Ugandan government, drawing from Veverica's aquaculture experience in several African countries. Karen you know, comes with this, this wealth of information from, with Auburn and USAID, and, and she's established here. And some fish farmers, we were established in aquaculture in Africa, but we, weren't, we were not at, at the time of our, we, of our meeting established with uh, in, in Uganda. So what she's done is help us to introduce us to a lot of the, a lot of the people, you know, the minister people, the government people, the authorities, that you, the, the permitting people that you have to, you have to, you basically have to get on board with and because and, there's a lot of permitting, a lot of bureaucracy that you have to do. And that's where Karen's been a great help. She's a wealth of knowledge. She she's, knows Africa like the back of her hand and, and she's a very practical person. And I think that also comes from her, her, her Auburn experience. Patrick Blow operates the largest commercial fishing operation in Africa. He has hired or worked closely with several Auburn Fisheries graduates in both Uganda and Zimbabwe. And many aspects of his company's business plan and practice were ideas born at Auburn. One of the things I like about the 
Orban approach to all this is that it's really a very practical hands-on approach whereas in aquaculture from other parts of the world you don't really find that it's more theoretical and um, a bit sciencey whereas really fish farming is is a, a common sense sort of a business and you need a very practical approach to it and that's what we found with with Auburn and that's very useful. Auburn University's influence is felt at nearly a dozen farms in southern Uganda. Jocelyn Ragunda is one of a small number of women who raise fish for profit. Her farm near the capital city of Kampala was among the first to employ the Auburn technology. Today it's a profitable and growing operation. Auburn has taught me how to do better fish farming. Okay. They have given me knowledge how to produce fish, how to manage it, and how to uh, move it to the market. Point number two, Open University or the fish project has brought us farmers together. Many of us were doing fish farming, but we had not uh, been able, we had not been before to get to know each other. So they have helped us in networking. In 2008, graduate student Sarah Rademacher spent time at Umoja Farm, where she helped train farm staff and improve their understanding of catfish hatchery management as part of the International Scholars Program funded by Auburn. Sarah has just been a blessing to this farm. She has come in and uh, she was she easily mixed up with the rest of the of the staff here. Maybe because she's more or less the same age, they are more or less the same age. But she has come in with new knowledge and hands-on. She's in hands-on uh, practice. She she knows more than uh, uh, our people here, and she's trying to put what she has learned in practice, the theory. So, uh, and the workers here, they have really picked up. I think it's really important because it, we have so many educated people and so much information at Auburn. It seems kind of a shame if we didn't spread it out and if we didn't, you know, use, uh, especially for students too, you know, learning how to apply what they've learned at the university at an actual, um, you know, uh, making a, a difference. And the effort to make a difference does not stop there. Even in their spare time, AU experts involved in the FISH project are passing on knowledge to the next generation. Three students who live and study at this rural orphanage near Kampala are learning about the fish farming industry from the ground up and one day hope to feed others and make a difference. With ocean food sources dwindling from overfishing and threats to habitats, Auburn's effort holds even more significance, especially with fish a top source for protein the world over. A number of other African nations have taken notice of Auburn's Ugandan model and could soon launch similar projects, all part of the AU effort to create jobs, boost the income, and feed the people halfway around the globe. Give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, or in this case, grow fish, and he'll make a living and feed his people for a lifetime. Mm -hmm.